In Naples, the perfect pizza is cooked in a wood-fired oven. At Willow Street, our new pizzas like our Dolce Picante are also cooked in a wood-fired oven. The perfect pizza. It's closer than you think. Hello and welcome to Jazz Tonight. I'm Michael Jacoby, executive producer of Jazz on the Plaz, here in Los Gatos and host of Raising the Standards on KSCO Radio in Santa Cruz. I'm delighted as we continue this uh, tribute to Duke Ellington this summer of, uh, and she gets so tired of hearing this, of uh, welcoming my favorite singer on the planet, I Paula never West. get tired of that. How are you? You never do. <laughs> and who who wasn't want to hear that? Yeah. Satchmo's with you. Okay, <laughs> Satchmo's yeah, with me now. Him, he's but he's going to be in world. and out. He's going to be making cameo appearances throughout throughout the show. Good to see you, my friend. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, I'm it's been a few be years since your yeah. fourth or fifth appearance here over the years. At maybe least fourth. Four, yeah. 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 You were the very first year. Oh, was you it the very here? first yeah, year? Yeah, this is oh, our 14th season. God, you progress so much and well, grown. Well, we and have, and, uh, but we're, big we're, time. We're, we're going back and we're dancing with what brung us. And, uh, and, and I am not really, uh, and people that know me will agree with this, I am not given to hyperbole, but uh, oh, I you. just love, okay. that's the, uh, that's okay. This is going to be one of those shows. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a Satchmo, go over there. <laughs> Didn't this happen to Hillary and Bill once there on 60 Minutes and a light fell down, I think, really? during the interview? Oh, I don't remember so, that. <laughs> don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, but not having been given to hyperbole, I, I just, I love your work. Thank you. And I love it for so many reasons, is that there are people, and, and okay. we're all, is that Satchmo? That's, <laughs> that's too much. A, okay, Satchmo, go much. over there. That's um, too much. It's... <laughs> Oh, you know what? We need a we need a nine year old on the set so we can do an Art Linkletter thing and we'll do the whole deal. Dogs, I feel I feel like W. C. Fields. Okay. There are there are people that do standards who will all but do tributes to the version of the standard and do the same arrangement as as they had. You bring something new to the table every time oh, you thank record you. a song. I try. But I would imagine that's important to you too. I mean, why why yeah, do it the same there's, way? You know, there, you know, some songs f to me just don't mean anything to me. Some songs I can't, you know, bring more to like say the man that got away. I can't yeah. top Judy Garland. Yeah. And, and then some things, you know, uh, are are more open to uh, doing something different to them. So that's what I try to do. And also maybe not do the most uh, songs that are kind of running to the ground. Yeah. Well, yeah, you are. Uh you you dig for treasure a lot, I, yeah. uh, and I mean the, the first time I heard Gershwin's "I'm Looking for a Boy," I mm. did, I'd never heard that. I mean, I oh. wasn't even aware of it. Well, when I first started, I used to uh, buy you know LPs. You remember those? Sure. And used to go to the stores, all the the old record stops, uh, shops, and and hunt for uh, singers. Of course, you know the Billie Holiday and Ella Fitzgerald and Sarah Vaughan and Peggy Lee, but also you know, people like um, uh, Sullivan, uh, Peggy, uh, Pearl Peggy, Bailey, yeah, yeah, sure. um, Anita O'Day. Those are those are pretty well known, but some more obscure people too. They're obscure now, more as the years are passing, yeah. like June Christie and or Shirley and, Horn and people like that. They yeah, so just. Sometimes I just Chris love, Connor. Yeah. yeah, sometimes I just love the album covers and stuff and were drawn to those and then would start listening yeah. to them. Well, it was a time when liner notes were so important, too. Yes. But, I mean, liner notes are nice now, but I don't know who could read them. I don't think you could right. be young enough to read them. <laughs> for, yeah, I've got a older way that, out here. I know, that little, yeah, if you even buy CDs anymore. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I want to talk a little bit about that later. Mm -hmm. We talked about it on the radio show the other day, but uh, growing, where'd you grow up? I grew up in San Diego. Okay. And was there a lot of music in the house? There was not not jazz, not too much jazz in particular. My dad like he, lo he liked Ray Charles a okay. lot, and he liked some um, classical music. Remember, she he had this Brenda Lee album. Okay. Yeah, this well, like and Quincy was producing stuff. her stuff. I did not know that. Yeah, that he did some of yes. Brenda Lee's stuff. Yeah, yeah, but just there was there were right. you know of course we had the R and B mm -hmm. you know. Had the Motown. Now, did was there a piano in the house? Did your mom no, play no or? instruments in the house. But I grew up playing the clarinet. We all grew up playing an instrument. 
My sister and I played the Now, did your folks play, or did no. this was just something rounding your education? They were, yeah. oh, you guys are going to Well, we were, like, in marching band. Yeah. You know, it was more that kind of thing. And we started that, like, in fourth grade, so yeah. it was, what, 10? How long did you play the clarinet? I played through most of high school. Okay. And then I quit because it wasn't cool yeah. anymore yeah. to be in the marching band. Yeah. I didn't want to be a band nerd. Did you master Stranger on the Shore finally? Or? No. <laughs> no, I did not. Uh, did you sing in the church? I never, no. No. No, no, no. no singing at all. No singing at all? No, just to myself. All right, so you got, were you in a rock and roll band in high school? No. 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 It was just... So how did this all start? Well, started going to college, took a, like a jazz, San Diego State, okay. took like jazz appreciation kind of thing okay. and started... It kind of opened me up to a but lot But no of interest stuff. prior to this? I mean, you sing in the shower. I mean, you just... I mean, no. But once I got out of college I felt like I needed a creative outlet okay. and I just kind of felt like you know maybe I'll started sitting in stuff and okay. once I moved to San Francisco I moved to San Francisco in 88 and I said you know maybe I can sing every once in a while maybe I can sing once or twice a year or something and you and I met probably else. relatively soon after uh you moved to San Francisco. I guess I met you in the early 90s, maybe. Yeah, was that was probably it. I was at Caramel, and uh, our friend Craig Maxwell was uh, mm. uh, But you were working, at, at, what was it, Townsend? Uh, Townsend was the last restaurant I worked That's at. It, yeah. it was the last one I worked at, yeah. and I had opened the place up. But I had worked at a couple of other places, yeah, yeah. you know. So, okay, you moved to, uh, moved to San Francisco, and started singing or decided to move to San Francisco because I, that's... I, I started singing like right before I moved to San Francisco. And then I started taking some lessons when I moved up here with Faith Winthrop. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sure. uh, because she was, you know, talk about someone who knew the standards and knew some more obscure. She really exposed me to a lot of the music. Mm -hmm. And what was your major in college? I did not graduate, but I went for four and a half years. But I took mostly <laughs> philosophy and film. Okay, so with with an eye on producing or directing, I was or I watching just a lot of movies. Film. <laughs> well, I just love film. Yeah, I still love film to this mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. You were um, featured in, I, I'm, even though it was a, one of Robin's films, it was a bit of an obscure film, Bicentennial Man. Yes, you had a. Uh, a number in the, what did you sing in that? I, I sang two songs in that. I sang The Very Thought of You okay. and Embraceable You. And you sang it with a huge orchestra. It was. First, um, they they taped the music, like which is what they do, you know, to save money. Right. They taped the orchestration. Then I went in and sang it oh. with, no, I sang it with them actually. Okay. And then so they taped that. So during the film process, I was mouthing it yeah. during the film process. Okay. And that was like, at, oh my God, it was like four or five in the morning. And I'm so short, they had these heels literally uh, this tall. <laughs> and you know, and if I would have fallen asleep, well, I would have been dead. So I, I'm trying to like stand up and everybody's trying to stay awake. Well, I got I got to tell you, uh, a few weeks ago when we saw each other in the city, you were doing a marvelous new show uh, mm -hmm. dedicated to protest music. But when you came out in the evening gown, <laughs> I said to my wife, Mary, oh. I said, she's about 12 inches taller, isn't she? I oh, mean, no. Well, I did have th those some, are some heels on. Heels. Those I had some, are some heels, heels on. But most of the program, as you know, was I <laughs> wore Levi's. jeans and a, and it's just, and a flag shirt. Uh, before we go to the break, I want to talk just a few minutes about the program. Uh, our friend uh, Pamela Rose that's been here does a program called The Wild Women of Song, which is wonderful. And it's a multimedia program, which is what, what you've done on this. And, uh, and, and it's, it's marvelous. Thank you. And you know, it, to those songs, I mean, I mean, you've got the obvious, the, the usual suspects in protest music, Pete Seeger, Bob Dylan. You have Paul Robeson tune in there. They've uh, scandalized, scandalized my name, my which name. is about the blacklist. Yes. Um, you do uh, George M. Cohan. You do Over There and Johnny Get Your Gun. And it's just, and you also do, and we talked about this uh, on the, the other day, you do um, uh, The House I Live In. 
which yes. is the tune Sinatra won the Academy Award for, for mm -hmm. Higher and Higher. Mm -hmm. um, a remarkable show, and all this happening is you're showing slides of civil rights movements and protests and anti-war movements. Yeah. And, uh, I wanted, I just didn't have, you know, that was kind of like a last minute thing, so I wanted to have more, I wanted to have like Rosie the Riveter shots yeah. and the women working during oh, yeah, yeah, World War yeah, II, yeah. but there just wasn't time and more things about, you know, because I wanted to, you know, end on a very high note about yeah. diversity yeah. and everything. And the oh, great thing about it is it, it can was always... a very patriotic show to me. Yeah. Totally, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have, uh, I won't call them friends, but we have Facebook contacts that wouldn't have gotten it. Oh, Facebook. <laughs> it's that time of year. That's right. It's that but, time of uh, year right now. No, it is. A, it's yeah. a very uplifting show. I, I think so. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad people liked it. And the great thing about it also, because I would like to tour this show is Absolutely. you could always move certain songs in and out sure. and I wanted to go back as far as the, the Civil War is what I yeah. wanted to do this wasn't enough time yeah. and I did find some really obscure songs yeah. then we're talking with Paula West who uh, by the time you see this will have already appeared and knocked them dead in the park here at Jazz in the Plaza uh, we're going to take a little break. Uh, a big thank you to the good folks at Willow Street Wood Fired Pizza, where you're having dinner tonight. Yes, I am. I know you enjoy the restaurant. Uh, and, uh, we're delighted they're kind enough to sponsor the show. New menu, new look, and a new chef that we'll be talking to in a couple of weeks. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, come here. You know why I bring my folks here so often? Because Willow Street has the best kids' menu in town. And... Kids eat free on Tuesdays. Thank you. No, that's what I'm talking about. Can I get a wine list? Never mind. In New York, the perfect pizza is prepared with fresh, creative toppings. At Willow Street, our new pizzas, like our prosciutto di Parma and gorgonzola, also feature fresh, creative toppings. The perfect pizza. It's closer than you think. Hi, welcome back to Jazz on the Plaza. Uh, the breathing you hear in the background isn't a very excited audience. It is, in fact, Satchmo, who, uh, who made an appearance earlier, who is a French bulldog, a service dog. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, I have, uh, he travels in New York more than I do. I saw him last yeah. time in New York, oh, yeah. he was hanging around. Yeah. Yeah, he's a marvelous dog. Uh, so we were talking about arrangements and different approaches. And I think the first thing, and it may have been on your first CD, uh, you did a version of Lover, Rogers and Hart tune, which was, and it, you know, I think that's when we met or I wanted mm. to, that's when I started playing a lot of your stuff. But I remember saying to myself, wow, this is not what I expected. Oh. And it was just, it was just marvelous. It's hard to find songs that you can like really sing fast and stuff. And that yeah. really, well, I'm not singing it as fast. It makes yeah. it seem that way. Yeah. But, you know, the, the musicians are really going yeah. gangbusters. So it's hard to find that kind of tempo. And, 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 and you have, uh, again, you, you, um, you're not afraid to tackle things that, that, that people don't expect to hear. I mean, you're the, uh, I think you're the, the first jazz vocalist I've heard do Dylan. And uh, mm. and you take a song there's, and you there's not a many you there, own it when there, you seriously oh. it's not like uh, I mean this there's is your version of like a Rolling it. Stone is killer oh. yeah and that and was, now you're doing Lou Reed Walk on the Wild Side yeah which you did in the uh, protest show which was a yeah, yeah. as an encore yeah. thing um, we did a the year before we did a all Dylan show at SF Jazz yeah. that was the program before so there's. Yeah a lot of Dylan material, yeah. and when I do my show at the Nico, I always want to incorporate yeah. some Dylan. Yeah. And, uh, and the marvelous version, as a matter of fact, he's, uh, he's coming, uh, not to uh, promote other venues, but he's coming to Montavo next year, Jimmy Webb, who, uh, who I have never seen. I'm going to go to the show. I'd mm. love to. The, this time, by the time I get to Phoenix. Yes, uh, we just, a lot of the Glenn Campbell yeah, uh, yeah. music. We're going to probably do Wichita Line maybe yeah, today. You did, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we but we did by the time I get the Phoenix in our last program. Yeah. I've also um, done uh, Gentle on My Mind. Yeah, yeah. Did Jimmy Webb write that as well? Yes. Oh, marvelous, marvelous. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you go? By, I know when we were we were talking before we got here about 
record labels, and it, it, it's it's just inevitable that every week it seems we talk about this with artists. Is that mm. either you're with one or you're prom or you're doing your own, yeah. and you say, well, I have more control. On the other hand, it would be nice to have a regular label that's promoting you. It, yeah, it, but there's not a lot of yeah. you know labels that are producing yeah. Yeah. the kind of music we do yeah. now. So you produce like, all your own stuff. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, do you do the funding deal? Have you ever done that? I have not. Okay. I, I have not. Yeah. Uh, but I know people are doing that. But even getting a CD, I'm not sure what it means anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I, so, you know, everything's changing so much. So the CDs you sell are at live events more than any. Yes. Well, there, are there any record and stores left? Not very many. I mean, is Virgin still in Not, New York? I don't no, know. I don't. No, those are all so gone. Yeah. Those Rasputin, are all gone. What was Towers? Well, there's one the that city. closed down on Powell Street, Rasputin's closed. Yeah, right, yeah. Recently. There's not a lot of stores mm -hmm. yet left. Your voice and your work would seem to lend itself to vinyl. Have oh, you, uh, no, I, mean, I haven't. Have I know considered... it's like come back. Somewhere. Yeah, it is coming back somewhat. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and we're learning. I mean, we all, I, I, I'm kind of repeating myself from another interview, but we're all learning that what we thought was great sound and CDs, that there was, the vinyl was much warmer and the, the production quality. Do you still have all your vinyl? No. no I, I have, the problem is styluses to find oh. those. And, uh, you know, I mean, how many did you have at one time? You must have had. No, hundreds. I have a thousand CDs, but I don't oh, think I have that. I have a lot the, of vinyl, okay. but not. Because. <clears throat> when I was first on the air, we were playing vinyl, but uh, very, very short, <laughs> excuse me, very short-lived after yeah. that. Um, so, you, you, I want to just take a shot, Dark. Six okay. CDs? No, just four. Four, okay. Just four. So there's two more coming. <laughs> what, uh, I would love it. Yeah, what, nice. What's your plan? I know you, you haven't been in the studio lately, but what's your like? Um, you have one live CD, right? Yes, Which the last one. At Jazz Standard? Yes, okay. yeah. That was, and it might have to, that might be the most economical way. Again, I think it is for most people yeah. to do it that way. But I have like tons of material that I've done because that was uh, 2012. So it's been four years have passed. Yeah. And so we have a lot more material yeah. now too. Yeah. So when, do you, when, yeah, well you produce them, but do you, do you, collaborate with anyone in terms of choosing uh, material? Oh, of course. Well, for the last one, when George Masterhazy was right. was alive, that was a total collaboration. Yeah. And it always is with the, uh, if you want to, for lack of a better term, uh, musical director or arranger. You know, the, the piano player has done most of the arrangements. You started so. with George, right? I started with Ken Muir. Okay. Um, but George was a big part of your life. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah he was great. Yeah. I just actually went to Kate May okay. uh, a couple months ago. They do a tribute concert to him every year because oh, that's yeah. where he's from. So yeah. I went and participated in that, which was nice, con reconnecting with uh, some of the people there. And, uh, you know, and did we did uh, Wichita Lineman and Like a Rolling Stone because yeah. he was the one that did that yeah. arrangement. Yeah. Uh, not to get real maudlin, but you lost a very good f friend, and um, Jazz lost a good friend, and Wilkes Bashford. Yes, yeah, he was, was very supportive yeah. of me, like, since the 90s when I first met him. Yeah. And, of course, we were both big dog lovers, yeah. too, but he's a sweetheart of man, sweetheart. Yeah, he was, he was and nice. I sang at his service and yeah. everything. You do, uh, you are... Um, well, to be cliche, is you're, you're a sweetheart of the uh, of the San Francisco, New York jazz society. Oh, I mean you, uh, you. Well, where's the what was the little club at since the Algonquin? The Algonquin, that very yeah. Very strange place, because it was like this wide. It, yeah, right? it was like it this was, long. Yeah. It's like you were the either in the artist's face, <laughs> yeah, right. or you or felt you were in Siberia yeah. or something. Yeah. But I, it was, a, I, I miss that place yeah. because I was there every fall. Yeah, you were for, for yeah. And that's my favorite yeah. time to be in New York. And there's not, the only room that exists like that now really is the Carlisle. Yeah, I, yeah, I saw Bobby Short at the Carlisle years ago. I saw him ago, like my, four or five my, times yeah, there. Yeah, I'm glad uh, I saw him there. But, uh, you know, my wife's aunt was Dorothy Loudon. So oh. uh, for Mary's 30th birthday, we went mm. back uh, 
there. And, uh, and of course, uh, you and I were talking about the other day, you uh, did the appell room with Michael Feinstein mm -hmm. last year. Was that the tribute to Bobby Short? Was that the show? That was a, yeah. a Bobby Short tribute. Yeah, yeah that was neat. Yeah. That was neat. It, I, I, that's, oh, they did a great ja job yeah. with Jazz at Lincoln Center with yeah. all the rooms. You've, you've done the Rose Room there, the Dizzy's. What's your, what's your favorite place? Did you do Blue Note in New York? I did the Blue Note a few years ago. I was a part of a, a Harold Arlen tribute, okay. and that was with Andy Bay and Ann Hampton Calloway, okay. um, Dina DeRose, yeah. Yeah. and okay. that was fun. And Jazz Standard's a great... Jazz Standard is... Uh, I would say that's my favorite one. You know, it's like... Uh, the, where... where uh, the place the Beatles played uh, in Liverpool, the Cavern. Yeah. It always has that feel to me. It, it just bricks, and you know, you're downstairs, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's a, it's a great room. I like a, that a great one, sound. and I like Birdland also. And good cue upstairs at the Smoke. Um, yeah, Birdland's cool. And uh, you play the village, the uh, Vanguard. No, no. the hardly uh, vocalist ever yeah. play there. Is that right? Yeah, I, it's I, more I saw of an it. instrument. And that's a little place. As yeah, well. it's been talk that's about a, being yeah. around forever. Tell you, uh, and do a flow of consciousness, which we're, we're apt to do on this show. Two things about our friendship. One, when uh, we were in Paris, not you and I together, but my wife and I were in Paris, you mm -hmm. recommended some great restaurants. Oh. And we had just a marvelous time. Oh. And you were, you were int uh, integral in getting us uh, to, to feel at home there, and it was terrific. Mm. And the other, as I said the other day, one of the great nights of my life, you invited us up for an Obama debate viewing party mm. and made the best fried chicken I've ever had. Oh, thank you. You have to see. I Paul opened the door. I mean, she is covered in flour. And she goes, oh, come on in. And I have never seen a woman working hard. And go, it was just incredible. It is a lot of, it is, yeah. but it, it was a lot of fun. And it was such a great evening. And it was just fun. Yes. It was the right debate. It was. It was. <laughs> and, and, and the right result. It, uh -huh. it well. So it was a lot of fun. Let's talk a little bit, if, if we can, as we wind down. Um, you don't have a website. Well, we need to get your website. Uh, Are we working no, on that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you yes, need to uh, yeah. drag Facebook. you screaming. But I'm on kicking. Facebook, and uh, you could always find uh, out what's going on. Too. But if people want to buy CDs, Amazon, or where do they go? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What's on your musical bucket list? Ooh, oh my goodness. Well, I have it on my, my phone. <laughs> There's some, you know, songs that are always in the queue that I want to learn. Okay. And so I just, you know, so, you know, next time I do, I'm not sure like as far as a, a theme program, like I, just the one we did at SF Jazz and we did Dylan before. I'm not sure yeah. yet. I, I know I thought about something the other day, but I can't remember what it was. Okay. Do you write at all? No. no. I have written alternative lyrics sometimes okay. when, because sometimes the lyrics are oh. so archaic. People wouldn't know yeah. the ref get, right. get the reference right. point, so I kind of update it. Oh. So, but not too much, but, you know, sometimes. Who do you listen to? I don't listen to a lot of the new music that's come out. Not too much. Okay. Um, mostly, I listen to stuff that I like more, like some funk, some R and B, some. Uh, you know, we've we lost a bunch of people, you know, this year so Real far. Big fan? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And David Bowie. Yeah, and Michael. Yeah. Lots of your contemporaries, do you, who do you particularly like? Oh, the jazz people? Now, Natalie uh, Douglas is, is, is a friend yeah, of yours. I think yeah. she's going to be here next year. Good. And then I like Cecile McLaurin Savant, of yeah. course. She's yeah. doing fantastic. Yeah. Um, Liz Wright. Yeah. And you, uh, Karen Allison. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so... What do you, in the back of your mind, or do you, get, you know, you say there's 2012, uh, do you get antsy and say it's time to do a CD? Yes. I know, yeah. I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's time to do a new CD. I'm so, and that, sure. gives, there, that gives you a theme for a concert, too, is sure. a CD release concert. Yeah. You know, that yeah. always works. Um, your, 
When are you going to decide? Are you going to do this, the, the protest thing more? I would love to we, do it, it we, more. Really, if I, I can would, help with that, we, if we anybody, put that together. And I, so, it, I can't tell you folks what a, what a wonderful, and as you say, if you can change it. I mean, it's, you can it's always, a marvelous. Oh, practice. we have too many songs to choose from. Yeah. So yeah, you can always change it up if yeah. you know something happens in the world. We run out of protest music. We're in real trouble. Well, yeah. maybe that would mean we don't have something to protest yeah. about. But I, I just can't imagine. Highly that. unlikely. Yeah. Highly unlikely. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, again, the folks, by the time they see this, will, uh, uh, will have missed the concert, and hopefully they saw it. But uh, you're with who? Who's in your group? Well, Adam Shulman, piano player, does most of the arrangements now. And it depends on whether... Locally, I say I work with John Witala and Aaron Germain. Aaron Germain will be here tonight. And Greg Weiser-Pratt. Okay. Or sure. Jason Lewis on drums yeah. locally. In New York, I work with Ed Cherry on guitar, okay. and um, Barack Mori or Doug Weiss on the bass, and Jerome Jennings on the drums. Well, it is a delight that uh, for um, 10 weeks a year, uh, I'm so overjoyed to be part of this event and to help put it on. And, uh, and once every four or five years, a particular week is thrilling to me because mm -hmm. my old friend comes back. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Thanks. Thank Paula you. Paula West. That's jazz tonight. Well, next week we will talk to the uh, surprisingly young, and I've never thought I would live to say this line, but Booker T. Jones is only 71. He's a young man, and he is something. We're going to chat with him next week. That's jazz tonight. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to Willow Street. Until next time, I'm Jacoby. I'll see you soon. In other words.